Salut tout le monde, bienvenue au Quantum Show cette semaine, je reçois nul autre que Ben Pakowski. Ici Jacob Amel, bienvenue au podcast Quantum. Sérieusement, là, pour, là, pour la tête de Gura, là, sérieux, ça existe pour moi. So, uh, Ben, thank you for being here. My pleasure. It's really uh, an honor for me. So, I uh, just want to uh, talk to you a little bit about your, uh, your story with bodybuilding and how you, uh, you, you did all your things and you go to the Olympia. Yep. So, can like, you tell us? Just all, all from the uh, beginning. Yeah, yeah, but quickly. But yeah. Um, so, I, I grew up in a very unhealthy house. Um, nobody worked out. Nobody ate well. Um, and uh, I was the first one literally to ever go to the gym and, and uh, I started because I didn't want to be like everybody else. I wanted to be like, I wanted to be great. I wanted to do something different and I uh, started at 15 years old and I really just started because I wanted to be faster for sports. So I played baseball, I played hockey, I grew up in Toronto so I played a lot of sports growing up and I just wanted to be a better athlete so um, you know I found that if I'd go in and I'd train my legs every day I would get faster so I just went in and trained them all the time I didn't know what I was doing I just went in and you know played around with some machines um, and I found that doing that certain body parts started to respond and I liked it I started, I started to feel good I look good um, but for the first you know couple of years it was just kind of playing playing around and then um, I, I ran into these two brothers who uh, were just these massive bodybuilders and uh, I would watch them, you know, and just admire what they did. So eventually I just wanted to do what they did, and all they did, these guys just worked hard. Um, so I, that's how I, what I learned. These are the, still to this day are the two hardest working guys I had ever met in the gym. Um, you know, the stuff they did was crazy. So I loved bodybuilding from the time I was 17 years old, and, um, You know, trained every day at least once a day, usually twice a day. But it wasn't because I had some, um, I even really had the aspiration at that age to be a great bodybuilder. I just loved to train. Um, ended up going to university at Western Ontario, uh, four years there, and uh, trained every day. Got bigger, wasn't ready to compete or anything like that. But uh, when I finished, I decided that I wanted to get in shape to do a bodybuilding show. Um, you know, obviously gone through a lot of struggles in university and I wanted to get in shape so I did a bodybuilding show and I won, that was in 2005 um, and then uh, I did the provincial championships in 2006 and I won and I did the Canadians in 2007 and I lost by one point um, and then got my pro card in 2008 and, um, and I, I think for a Canadian going to the U.S., it's scary. It's because you don't know, right? You don't know, you assume they're so much better than you. There's, you assume that they have something that you don't. Uh, and then when you get there, you realize everyone has this e the evil, even playing field, man. We all have the same opportunity. Um, it's just a matter of who's going to work hard enough. So once I realized that, um, I was willing to do whatever it took to get to the top of the world. And, um, you know, in 2012 and 13, I was one of the top guys in the world. Um, and it was, it was awesome, I was loving it, and then I had a couple kids, um, so my career took a backseat, you know, I just didn't want to, I didn't uh, see a reason to do it anymore, so I did the Olympia in 2012, I did it again in 2016, and then after the Olympia in 2016, I decided to retire, uh, you know, having done it twice, I had nothing else to prove, you know, I still love training, I still think bodybuilding is the best sport in the world, um, but I have so much more to li to live. I have so many more things I want to do. Um, so much more to teach people. All these mistakes that I've made for the last 20 years in preventing people like yourself from making the same mistakes. I, I do things like this. I come back and, and I do seminars and I'll, I'll talk about absolutely anything anybody wants. Um, any way I can help, I'll help. All right, then, can you talk a little bit about uh, the, uh, the story behind MI40? Because the first time I, I saw you was the first MI40 online, and then mm. the gym and everything, so... Uh. Well, like I said, in 2011, um, I, my son, I was told I'm having a son. And at the time, I was making okay money as a bodybuilder with sponsorships, but okay money for me to live, not to support a family. Um, so as soon as I found out my girlfriend at the time was pregnant, I started a business and I said, you know, I have to do something because 
at any time, this company could come along and say, you know what, you need to get injured, or you get a bad placing, and they say, we don't want to pay you anymore. So I opened a business, and uh, you know, I knew I was good at teaching people that exercise. I had had hundreds of clients, hundreds of uh, personal training clients or, or online coaching clients. I also had a degree in kinesiology and biomechanics. Um, so it just basically started off like, hey, I'm going to teach people my, my principles. And you know, I sat down with myself and I said, well, you know, I get to travel the world. What are the things that um, most people do wrong? And, and what, were, what would most people benefit most from? So it just came up with like these five really basic things that I'm like, gosh, if everyone did this, their training would be better. Uh, and that was really how it started. And, it, and no marketing or anything like that. It was just like, hey, you know, put this out. And it just grew so fast, so organically, because it was good. It was good information. It was stuff nobody else was talking about. And um, people could see that I just legitimately wanted to help. Um, so was the five uh, fundamental? Oh, man. Um, so looking back, I don't remember what the five were, but so I know that the biggest thing was tension. Um, like people don't, people are always focused on weight and not tension, and, and that doesn't necessarily mean the same thing. It's evolved a lot since then, right? So I've created something that I call the six essentials of exercise, and that, that maybe is where it's evolved to. So um, the first and most important thing everyone needs to be doing is selecting the exercises that fit your body, because just because an exercise fits me, doesn't mean it's gonna fit you. And um, we have very different structures, very different lengths, arms, legs, size pelvis, size clavicles. Uh, everything's different. So just, you, you watch your favorite YouTube stars and you say, oh, that guy does this exercise. He has a big chest, so therefore I should do that exercise too. And it's not the case. So you need to learn how to select exercises for your body type. And you need to learn to set them up that, so that you're, you're uh, allowing the muscle you're trying to work to do the greatest amount of work. That's like, first and foremost and that, that's maybe the most um, paradigm shifting for people it's just not what most people think they think you know I bench presses for my chest and the squats are for my quads but it's just not the case right um, so the thing I tell people is forget everything you think you know about exercise and start thinking I'm um, like hey, if what if I do this what is it what does it feel like what does it look like and am I using the right thing uh, and then from there it's initiate with the working muscle so once I've selected an exercise I've set up for it I stabilize, so I call it SSI, right? Um, set up, stabilize, initiate. Um, so then initiate with the working muscle. And if people can, I don't even want to go into the deeper ones, but if people can remember that, yeah. exercise will change for you, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, select your exercise, set up, stabilize, initiate. And one thing you do, you talk about, and uh, Tom Ferriss talk about uh, it a lot, it's uh, don't have uh, emotion to exercise. Like yeah. you said, the bench press can be good, yeah, can be good or good for you. Mm -hmm. uh, nobody got to touch her. It's just uh, if he doesn't have the uh, the right uh, rib angle and everything. Yeah. So, uh, uh, you know, I lay into a bench press and my chest gets bigger. Mm -hmm. Most people lay into a bench press and they get sh so shoulders. You know, they think, well, I don't build muscle because I have bad genetics. It's not the case, yeah. right? It's just like, it's not that you have bad genetics. You just, that exercise doesn't happen to fit you. Whereas if we just did change something else, all of a sudden, oh my goodness, then my chest gets really big. Yeah. And all of a sudden, oh, I don't have bad genetics anymore, yeah, yeah. right? It's just, and that's the beauty about training that I love is empowering people to realize that it's not your genetics. Like, I don't think there's that much. There's obviously a variance with how people build muscle, but I don't think it's as big as people think. I think you, if you can build any muscle in your body, you can build them all. That's an important realization to make. Is um, it's just learning how to set up. We talk about three tips for building muscle. If you have like one big tips, you if you do this training wise for breathing muscle, this is it. Well that, you know, yeah. set up, stabilize, initiate, like that's everything. Mm -hmm. um, and forget what you think you know about exercise because, um, like I said, just because someone else does that exercise doesn't mean it's for you. Um, and, and the other thing I guess supplementally is, you know, everyone's always looking for a training goal and then a supplement goal. And the supplement goal is stop spending so much time focusing on how to uh, stimulate yourself for the workout and start placing more focus on coming down after the workout. Mm -hmm. Uh, if you could eliminate pre-workouts altogether and, and put more time and effort and money into the, what you take post-workout to calm down your nervous system and recover the muscular system, like that's why people take steroids, right? It's like steroids don't necessarily make your workout better, although sometimes they do. The biggest benefit is it allows you to recover faster so you can get back in the gym and do it again. Um, so, you know, people take, a, take credit away from people who use steroids, but the reality is it's just allowing us to work way more, way off, way, way more often and way harder. Um, so 
that that's what should be that's what nutrition and supplementation should be focused on it's like not trying to drive performance as much as as driving recovery and one thing you you mentioned during the, the presentation you you make is you can wait till you take proteins because you don't want to shove uh, lots of things in your stomach and mm -hmm. then maybe it's it will be good to wait to uh, take some proteins also again. yeah so it may be complicated i'm not sure who your audience is but the autonomic nervous system so the nervous system that exists inside your body that just auto regulates everything is it has two branches is a sympathetic and a parasympathetic and sympathetic is very um uh, stress it's a stress response it's the fight or flight it means it's getting you prepared to to fight or, or run away so when you're training you're stimulating the sympathetic nervous system so your body's in this uh, fight mode it's like so there's no digestion going on there's none of that stuff going on it's just a bunch of stress hormones being released um, and then after training if that stays up and you eat your body can't digest that food because it's still in this like stress mode so stress is anything that literally causes you to become stressed or releases negative hormones in your body so it could be uh You know, getting caught, cut off in traffic. It could be you know bad news at work. It could be any any type of stress that's causing this sympathetic tone to go up. So we need to pay attention before we put food into our body to allowing our parasympathetic nervous system to kick on, um, which allows our body to rest and digest. So every meal, you know, I talk about the best way to think about it is what does everyone in, in, in most religious cultures around the around the world do? They pray. They pray to let themselves be thankful, to be grateful, to change their mind state from like this constant moving to like, I'm gonna calm down, I'm gonna enjoy this food, I'm gonna let this food become my body. Um, so that, that's the biggest thing people need to realize is eating in a mindless state or, or when you're in a hurry, is not a good thing. If you have one tip nutrition wise for gaining muscle, what will it be? Uh, it's not about what you eat, it's about what you absorb. Um, and so, for many years as a bodybuilder, I was very consumed with how much food I eat. And you realize you can actually build muscle on a lot less if you support digestion. So, we're not meant to eat as much food as bodybuilders do, right? So, you need to take digestive enzymes, you need to take uh, uh, hydrochloric acid to help support and assist digestion because otherwise, um, you're just gonna be having expensive poop. So. That, that's a huge one that, um, you know, trying to eat less and less and less and grow more and more and more. Mm -hmm. it, you know, and that's the biggest uh, blessing that many bodybuilders have um, is some guys grow eating two meals a day. And those are the people that are going to be successful bodybuilders because their digestive health is, is great. Their inflammation is low. Um, they don't have to just constantly be eating and eating and eating. And if you realize that you can get away with less, you're going to be much better off. And uh, I know that the last few years you're a lot, a lot more on the mindset and, uh, okay. and everything. So, do you have one tips to have uh, like a champion mindset or? Well, you need to have a world class standard. So, um, you are the way you look right now is the standard to which you hold yourself. And if you're not happy with the way you look, it's because you've, you've allowed that to happen. You, you've accepted less than something that's world class. And the reason I was able to achieve. Uh, great things in my life is because I wouldn't let myself accept anything less than the best. You know, I remember 17 or 18 years old, I think I was 18 years old, everyone goes, wow, man, you're huge. And uh, I was like, man, my, all that was going through my mind is, man, I'm, I'm nothing. Until I look like Flex Wheeler, until I look like some of the top items in the world, I didn't even think I had any, like I had done anything, you know, because I just had this objective at the end. It was like, until I'm doing this, I'm not there. Um, so having a world-class standard in everything you do what you know whether you're washing the dishes whether you're I don't know man cleaning your car like whether you're doing work create world-class standards and expectations for yourself because that'll shift your whole life and this is a lesson that I'm now transferring into my life is um, you know envisioning who I want to become and then what are the characteristics of that person and then just creating it like You know, I want to be a successful entrepreneur. I want to be very organized and be very scheduled. Well, I'm just creating it. And, and it takes time, it's one step at a time, just like building muscle, right? Um, it's not going to happen like that. But, you know, I have all these things in my mind, all these all things I want to do, and I have this standard here and I have a visual of what it looks like, and nothing's going to stop me until I get there. Nice. Mm -hmm. So what's the, the biggest thing you changed in the five, uh, five last year uh, to become like a uh, 
more and more uh, known in the fitness industry and more uh, more like you are now? Um, so throughout my career, I always uh, had a badge of honor around working harder than everybody else. I always wanted like so. One time I was 16 years old, I always wanted to work harder than everybody else because when I was a kid, I, I, I thought I was lazy. So. Uh, you know, come 16, 17 years old, the only thing I ever did is I'm going to work harder than everybody. Um, looking back on it, that was uh, not necessarily a bad thing, but if your objective is building muscle, working hard is not the first step. You must work smart first and then work hard. And if you don't learn how to, learn how to work smart first, it's just like running as fast as you can in the wrong direction. You know, you're going to end up hurting yourself, you're going to end up going in the wrong place. So uh, the thing I do now is... Um, there's still hard work involved, but it's so much more precise and like it, it's so much more thoughtful and mindful and accurate. Um, that's a big difference. And the other thing that I would say is another difference is um, meditation, man. Like, you know, anybody who's successful in life is meditating because it just it's just like the, the gateway into understanding yourself and changing yourself. And, and most people are so, they, they have fear and they have resentment, they hate themselves and they refuse to sit with themselves and actually look at, well, why? Like, find out and then because it's it's uncomfortable man there's no question it's uncomfortable to find out what why you're unhappy but uh, it's definitely the best uh gift you have in life nice yeah. and what's next for uh for mi40 and then bakuski in the next year uh man lots of stuff going on i'm writing a book right now which is exciting uh, we're redoing the mi40 nation member site um to grow it to 10,000 members Um, those are the two primary things right now. So supplement line, the book, and, uh, and the, the member site. Right. And uh, where can uh, can we see your stuff uh, online? M Mi40nation.com is just being revamped right now. Um, and it's very good. YouTube. I want it to, Thank uh, you, man. Two years uh, there's so much more stuff coming too, like crazy. Uh, YouTube, obviously, and then Instagram, which is uh, IFBB Ben Pack. And you have the podcast? I Muscle do have the Expert. Muscle Expert podcast. That's right. That's that's just fun, man. Yeah. I get to, you know, one of my goals for this year was expanding my network and meeting great people. It's awesome. And you did yeah. really a lot this year, huh? Did yeah. You? Well, we did two a week. Yeah. And I think we're going to go to three. Nice. I just like it, man. So two a week with guests and one a week is going to be me by myself. Because it's so much knowledge from everyone. So it's, yeah. it's really cool. All right. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Pleasure, man.